Welcome back, everyone, to the Lawful Good Undead campaign with me, Dwarf Pete, where in the last episode, we turned to the undead military to solve our problems. After all, what bad can a little necromancy do? <laughs> and thanks to those efforts, we were able to push back the ogres and even gain a gold bronze. And so it's my hope today that uh, we can kill, or at least weaken, Nagund... Uh, Nagoon Sarai very much. And so, we're not going to do what we did before. We're going to let our troops get in position. And we're also going to put a fort here, just so we have both entrances covered. And while we wait for our troops to... And of course, he announces me as his rival. Go figure. Uh, while our troops get in position here, we are going to reinstitute Dragon Dances. The current way our military functions as several separate factions, the most prominent being the Claw and Scales, being paid for by taxes but refusing to operate under the command of a unified structure, is hampering our military potential. In order to convince prominent military fingers to cooperate or to legitimize any commands coming from someone of another faction warrants a reform. The worst timing, man. Is this an offensive war? Oh, jeez. Okay, AI. You do you. Um. Oh my god, I'm not, at, I'm not at peace, you jerk! You absolute buffoon! Alright, well, I will continue. Let's continue reading that. The Golden Sage has con not come up with a new idea, however, rather a very old one, the Dragon Dances. In ancient times, clan leaders, sages, or even brothers would solve disputes or establish hierarchy through the only way no one could dispute, martial arts. The Dragon Dances will function as a way to ensure all kobold snouts are pointing the same direction and the strongest fighters can obtain and hold onto vital military positions. And as soon as we get out of war, we can, uh, do this. <laughs> what do you even want? Just two provinces, huh? Okay. Whatever. So, my hope is that after we attack Nagun Sarai and win, we can, uh, start to figure out what to do with this little... Just coalition block down here. And it's only so strong because every single nation here basically has a fort. And they each have like 10k troops. So it's, it's rather frustrating to have to deal with. And if you don't know, undead military moves extremely slow. Very, very slow. But we will let Yan uh, Lan Jin Hui siege down this fort. Uh oh. Oh, I thought, I thought for a second Nagoon Sarai was getting on the border with me. That would be very, very, very awkward indeed. And of course, we shall raise their dead to be our troops. And now would be a perfect time to get to this war if Lan Jin Hui wasn't so incessant. Awesome. Now I can click the button. So, with the need for a clear hierarchy in the military, this dragon dance is about more than just honor, it is about influence and power. As the council comes together to see the two sages duke it out, a crowd of hundreds of onlookers attempts to get a view of the fight. State officials have the first few layers around the fight for themselves, with the regular folk many layers thick behind them. The ones without 
with the best view, however, are the dozens of cobalt children who have climbed atop the cave opening of Balkanfa Palace and enjoy a bird's eye view. The duel is taking place in front of the Balkanfa Palace, the cavern which once housed Balrus the Gold, which was the location of the first ever dragon dance. The duel starts, with the smoldering claw sage immediately pressing the offense as the kindeds, kindled scale sage takes a defensive stance. And what follows is a... Either we get siege ability and shock damage through the smoldering claw winning, or we get... Uh... Fort defense and shock damage received? I think you know what I'm gonna go with. <laughs> and okay, I think it is the perfect time to... Go for... The attack. With Lan Jin Hui's help. And so we're off. And I might as well get uh, Spy Networker started, just so it's easier to siege. And right, I was going to pick up the next mission uh, idea set. You fully annexed him? Goodness gracious, Lin Jin Hui. You are bloodthirsty. So, and what we're going to do here is just a very slow push. We don't need to go really far deep in. Well, actually, we just need to take his capital. And do we want to take the next mill tech is the question. Basically, me and our army would be unbeatable by his tech 5. I'm not sure off the top of my head, so we'll wait for the time being. And we'll just slowly inch our way forward. There's no need to rush this. He doesn't have access through Jiansing, so once we get these two provinces, and keep in mind that there's a third one there, then we should no longer be able to get uh, flanked. Put the six shot guy there. And okay. Our castle has been completed, so our country is pretty well protected. And we're just going to sit. Try and take out his capital, and hopefully my ideal uh, peace treaty would look something like this. I want war reps to keep him poor. I want something like this for ourselves. Maybe a little, yeah, something like that. And we can make the Bikling state we took with the Gold Province in it a, ooh, we, uh, a full core. And we also took control of his, of the gold mine and his capital. Okay, so now what? Now we begin the pretty slow moving push into this area. Not Korea, as I like to call it. We'll go for whichever one we're going to need Yin Shang to be converted. Okay, here we're getting things done in 26 days. Oh. There he is. And one thing we need to be cognizant of is that we do not get flanked. It's awkward to have to undeal with a flank as the undead. Okay, he's putting up more of a fight than I was expecting. Let's go ahead and get that Miltech. I want to make sure he's dead. There can be no allowance for him to survive this war. 
we will even pick up some more undead. And we'll see if we can't trap him. And here you see the very awkwardness of trying to maneuver with undead. <laughs> and so really your best bet is to just try and use forts. Which we did. Had we not put a fort here, this would have been very awkward to try and defend. So we're just going to hold here. And I almost thought somebody colonized here for a second. That would have been very weird. And we'll see if we can converge. Do something. Just want to trap him. And it is very hard to do. So, what we do is we surround him. He's locked, okay. And we... Oh my goodness. Oh, oh, he's stupid. He decided to change his idea. And walk back. Okay, so now he's at 26k. And we definitely overwhelm him. And again, we'll use the isolation strategy. Taking loans here is perfectly fine. And nice, we got a, a much needed win there. So we just try to keep isolating him. It's the name of the game. Isolation, isolation, get him down to low enthusiasm, and he is done. Had we not have uh, undead military, this would be virtually impossible. <laughs> and we even have 50 army general tradition. What does that get us up to? 5 and 12 pips, that is nuts. We want to 100% this guy. So once again, we'll move forward. And we'll see if we can't uh, explore a little. Yeah, see? Okay. This is what I was trying to look for. He is trying to outflank me. So I'm just going to go send my three-star general onto one of his forts, and we will patrol with the other general. Yep, there he is. Sneaky, sneaky. He's trying to outflank me. But now we know where his troops are, so we can safely uh, take that fort. We just gotta keep juking them, essentially. Jubating them. If 
he wants to go down into my fort, he's certainly welcome. I wouldn't mind trapping his army. Okay, there's a 13 stack split up. There is another capital. Excellent. Now we just gotta get that one more fort. He's gonna get pretty close here. Nice, and my my sub uh, my ally Lan Jin Hui. Tell me win the battle, win the battle. Very good, Lan Jin Hui. Excellent. Now the AI is kind of flipping out because it's thinking, oh crap, I'm actually going to lose this. So we just got to keep up the pressure. And if we can take this fort, everything should be hunky-dory. Come on, take the port. Take the port. Beautiful. 83%. How does that look? What would I give up? Yes. That looks reasonable to me. Because I can put a fort here or here. And we get some territory that we can expand into. We get war reps out of this. And we'll just try to get maximum money. Eighty-seven percent. And okay, I am out of this war. Bada bing, bada boom. That is how you beat up one of the most powerful nations in the early game. <laughs> you simply use undead military to your advantage. So now the question is where do I want to put the fort? Here would stop pretty much anything, but. Maybe here? Yeah, because it has a river penalty against basically everything. Same with this, I guess. Okay, so now the question is... What do we want to do for our first idea set? And to answer that question, I don't really know. <laughs> At some point, our undead military is going to die off. So that leads me down to military thinking. On the other hand, we will be pretty poor for a long time here. So that leads me down some kind of economic or trade ideas. But I think our limiting factor here is definitely going to be military. Therefore, I think either quality... I don't want to do defensive because we already have the majority of uh, attrition. Offensive would, would give us discipline and better generals. Could also go for... No, Divine's not an idea here. I think... Quality. We just need good troops. Although, again, when I think about it, this only gives us infantry combat ability and discipline. So we're not going to have artillery for a while. Defensive would give us just a plant, 15% morale. Offensive would give us d discipline and land force limit. And better generals, so offensive honestly seems like the better idea. 
help us with trade ideas, we could get uh, trade efficiency and movement speed. Economic, we get artillery. Yeah, I like... Uh, I like offensive. Because we need good troops. Okay. And we might as well go ahead and get our relationships back up with everybody. Sink so they don't quite love us due to us being undead sympathizers. We'll go ahead and get a temple in our capital. And Yin Shang will need one as well. Can also revoke. And also put a temple here. <laughs> Our economy's definitely seen better days. Okay, so now one more question. Do we go to war with you guys? We could certainly call in a lot of enemies. Okay, I know how to answer this. What is my aggressive expansion looking like? Pretty high with the one heretic dude in the world, but other than that, really good. Okay, so we take Ying Shen. That's a good question. want this province, this province, that would be a good province, but I'm not sure if we can get it from beyond Fang. Alternatively, we could take uh, the this province. Yan Feng wants to declare on on Jiang. Kotai would join us. Would anybody else join us? No. But it would give us double the, the force limit. Okay. Well. See, we wait for the temple to repair and then we can answer that question. The Balriza Rizong isn't the only part of Balriza to have suffered from the time of Jaehaer and his son Jarel. The centerpiece of Balriza proper, the Ri Iha Kang, the Temple on the Hill, as it's translated, was also heavily damaged during the time of Jaehaer, the Great Burning, a humiliating period in which Sun Elves sought to erase our deification of Balris and defeat our spirit. They succeeded in neither. The temple sure did burn. Our repair has been long overdue. So we will click that. And we need the Gen Q hills to progress. Good questions. Actually, uh, wait, wait, wait. Which one of these guys... Okay, Yan Zhang is my rival. So it would make only sense. Wait. Five, 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 six. Well, let's attack now before they gain any more of an upper hand, I think. And all oh, right, I have to develop the institution at some point. Yeah, gross. All right, well, let's get this war started. I will go straight for Hayuk Cheng and Gooch Guhei.
And I'm good on power points, okay. And I wonder if... Wonder if... Let's put the two siege on there. And okay, we've got these two provinces. Which a city would be helpful. It would give us something to be able to develop. I'll take the, uh... The, uh, defensiveness, because, let's face, uh, sorry, the innovation, because, let's face it, we're never getting ours down. And they're gonna try and siege this land, huh? Okay, go ahead and try. You'll find it's most... takes a long time. Alright, awesome, there's that. Now he's kind of stuck. The AI is. Here is my final question. Is it worth backstabbing Beyond Fang? And to that answer, I don't really know the, the answer. To that question, I don't really know the answer. I know one for thing for sure, we need that province. We want his money. And how big of a coalition would that cause me? Nobody that I really care about. Okay, what do I want to do with Guhei? Guhei, I want to transfer trade, collect money, break his alliances. Yeah. There goes Kohai out. Next, I'll get rid of Ying Shen. Give me three more provinces. Not really of the culture I want, but I mean, it's fine, I suppose. You will break his alliance with Anjang. Okay, and I don't think I want any more land. So we will humiliate war ups, transfer trade, and take his money if we can. And that, I think, pleases everybody. Yeah, because Yanfang won't be angry. I can get power points. I also get trade, which increases my income, and I get war reps. Awesome. And I don't increase the power of Beyond Fang. Perfect. And right on time, there are the rebels for Nugan, Nugdan, Sarai. Okay, and now I just gotta figure out how to how to convert you. Or sorry, how to integrate you. We we broke ten ducats though. Oh, thank goodness.
Yeah, we want to keep relations high with Yanfeng. Kotai... I don't think we need to be too welcoming of Kotai. We lost the 2-6, but that's alright. Okay, and we can put a fort where? Here would block all of this land. Here would block these two provinces. Which I think are the most important here. How old is our leader? 63. My goodness, guy hasn't died yet. We want to make sure to have uh, castles in place for the next war with Nagund Sarai. So when does our truce with you end? In 1484, so that's in 10 years. And you guys I don't care about. <laughs> we have sufficiently dealt with you, I feel. And now we share a land border with Beyond Fang, which is kind of unnerving, but we're getting there. Maybe we should go with... Diplomatic? Diplomatic for the improved relations, that way we never have to uh, incur aggressive expansion, pretty much. I'm not sure here, to be honest. But, I think that is a good stopping point for today. As always, thank, uh, thank you everyone for watching, and stay tuned for more.